Oh, the epic collapse of the banking system is fully upon us. U.S. banking system outlook downgraded to negative. Gee, I wonder, but I thought Biden a couple days ago said that there was nothing to worry about. Oh, wow, the biggest mush ever went and endorsed something and then the opposite happened. But at least there's no more mean tweets, right? The credit ratings chief agency, Moody's Investors Service. Moody's, wasn't that also? Okay, I could be completely wrong on this one, but I'm just kind of freewheeling at this point in time. Wasn't Moody's also the same financial institution that looked at Biden's economic plan when he was running for president in 2020 and gave it a thumbs up? Fantastic. Buyer's remorse, you don't say. Downgraded its outlook of the U.S. banking system on Tuesday after rapid declines and collapses of Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, and Sig or Silvergate Bank in recent days. Tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to be taking a look at Signature Bank and holy, a lot of corollaries between SVB and Signature Bank. I wonder if anything's going to come out along the similar lines for Silvergate. Uh, one could think. Prominent ratings agency said that it changed to negative from stable. Our outlook on the U.S. banking system to reflect the rapid deterioration in the operating environment following deposit runs at Silicon Valley Bank, Silvergate, and Signature Bank. And the failure of SVB and SNY. All right, Moody said on a Monday afternoon report, operating conditions have sharply deteriorated. It also said in a note, according to multiple news sources, pandemic-related financial or er, fiscal stimulus. Are you okay? No, they're saying the uh, the uh, stimulus checks and the stimulus packages. Oh, the ones that were passed by Congress. It's like no, it's a it, it it's actually an inflation reduction act when we spend multiple billions of dollars. You don't get it. You're too stupid. And then months later, oh, what do you mean all the banks are collapsing? Hmm, interesting. Along with more than a decade of ultra-low interest rates and quantitative easing. Yeah, but we were told by the people in power outside of the uh, four-year little Trump interruption. Everything was fine. Everything was great. The Obama administration, hey man, they fixed all the stuff. They steered us out of the Great Recession, right? And then just plunged us right back into another. Resulted in uh, significant excess uh, deposit creation in the U.S. banking sector. What they're trying to say is uh, by all of those anti-economic policies, by people putting more money into banks, that created a problem. Good justification there. This has given rise to asset liability management challenges. Yeah, it's almost like they should teach us shit in school. How about that? With some banks having invested excess deposits in longer dated fixed income securities that have lost the value during the rapid rise of U.S. interest rates. Long term uh, securities. What, Bitcoin that's on the uh, rebound? But no, don't get it twisted. And I know a lot of people are also starting to say this as well. So I think my prognostication, my long shot theory, my conspiracy theory, if it was, I'm starting to get parroted by a bunch of other people as well. Can't take credit for it. It's just parallel thinking. But this is a way with the collapse of all of these uh, stupid little tech startup banks. It looks like a lot, but in actuality, unless like a Chase or a Bank of America, Citibank, unless one of those collapses or takes a significant hit, things are going to generally be fine. But the government at large could use this as the opportunity to just usher in their Fed coin, their United States digital currency. You watch, there's going to be whispers of it very, very shortly. Bank runs on Silicon Valley Bank, Silvergate, and Signature led to a crisis of confidence, both from investors and depositors. The ratings agency said lenders that had substantial unrealized securities losses and uninsured uh, deposits may be hurt more as customers look for safer alternatives to park their funds, it added. Moody's wrote, it expects more banks will be pressured after SVB's failure namely those with large amounts of deposits that aren't insured by FDIC. Reports indicated that upwards of 90% of deposits at SVB were uninsured as the bank was heavily used by tech companies and startups. Yeah, it's almost like, okay, you've got FDIC there, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. You're supposed to be overseeing some stuff, but yet you let this entire bank, you know, one of the big players out there in Silicon Valley, you let them skirt the regulation. So the solution is supposed to be more government. Well, the government that was there wasn't working before. So what are we doing here? 
FDIC transferred all deposits of Silicon Bank to a newly created bridge bank. Yep, yeah, see, oh, don't worry, guys, we're not going to be bailing out. All we're going to be doing is out bailing. Shut up, it's different. But you know what we're not seeing here at all whatsoever? What What's Joe doing? What's old Uncle Biden up to at this point in time? Because he's had some stupid statements on the situation in the past couple of days. You think, because this has got his ear at this point in time, and it's definitely the biggest running story, and it's likely to, especially with all of the Fed meetings and the interest rate conversations that are going to be happening later this week. You think that Biden would have his ear pressed uh, completely to the situation? No, of course not. He's uh, ramping up gun control with a new executive order. Now, I might go over this in the coming days. I just wanted to use this as, as an example, but, yo, he's... He's, uh, go, uh, he's out there compromising your financial futures, okay, by bailing out these banks, putting more debt on the taxpayer, and then he also wants to take away your personal protection. You, you, you make the currency worthless, and then you take away any means in order to protect and defend yourself. How fucking adorable. You just love to see it. But who, with the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank? And like it's been well established that they were the bank of all of the tech startups down there in Silicon Valley. Who is ultimately the most affected group at this point in time? Is it going to affect you and me at this point in time? Well, I'm up here in Canada, so not right now. But for the average American that's out there, mm, chances are not really. Not really. Unless, of course, you're one of these greenies that's out there because climate activist companies at risk after svb collapse bank was vital to climate tech sector so you're telling me the climate change crew is taking another fat fucking l as if it wasn't bad enough because also this was out there recently i seen this i think it was over the weekend yeah the 11th so yeah it was a few days ago jack Posobiec, who's a little bit touch and go but when it comes to dunking on easy targets you he doesn't miss, does not miss at all whatsoever, and he's right on top of all of this banking information here so far, and he's never one to miss on a Greta Thunberg situation, except for one that involved Tate, he was awfully quiet on that one. Anyways, uh, hi Greta Thunberg, why did you delete this? Uh, a top climate scientist, here's a tweet that has since been deleted from the great and powerful Greta Thunberg, you know, the leading voice in the climate change movement, even though today is the last day, and I tried to take a look at the weather history up here in Grand Prairie, but I seem to think... Maybe my mind escapes me for a second. That's highly possible. I've had my mind on a bunch of different things lately, but all of March and outside of one run in January where melted and there was a significant, there was a point in time where there was more grass and actual snow left on the ground, but that tends to happen in winter up here in Grand Prairie. It's a fucking weird place to be. But I think all of March, it has been at least 20, if not 30 below every morning when I wake up and run outside. So I, it's been cold, like unseasonably fucking cold, but you know, my climate change and all that stuff. And I think if we take a look at the totality of the winter period, because yeah, in a couple days time, it'll officially be spring. So, you know, shout out for that one. But today is going to be the last day according to forecasts where it's supposed to be unseasonably cold because our average our average for this neck of the woods is supposed to be minus one so just below freezing so what would that be 34 degrees something like that oh no 30 degrees 30 degrees because it's just below freezing the fahrenheit is so stupid anyways it's good for cooking but outside of that just you know fucking get with the program i've been told and we've all been indoctrinated over the past 20 years because when did that stupid and inconvenient truth come out where they've just been continuously fear-mongering when it comes to well global warming oh sorry climate change a uh, 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 climate crisis because all of the people the top climate scientists continue to push these types of narratives a top climate scientist is warning that climate change will wipe out all of humanity all of humanity unless we stop using fossil fuels over the next five years and as you can see from the highlight that's down there that was june 21st 2018 five okay so i guess we still have about three months and a week left so it's still possible like all of humanity all of humanity could be wiped out like that you know just thanos snapped again and again and again and again and again and then eventually he just takes that big stupid floompy knife that he has and just yeets the last person but um 
I think the population is still growing like within the past month or so or past couple of months we hit 8 billion people on earth so I think humanity on the whole is doing pretty fine so yeah the, the very good justification for deleting that tweet oh well and I bring that up just so I can use Greta's face in the thumbnail because I know that's just gonna drive clicks okay come on now I gotta play the game a little bit I showed you yesterday all my proof when it comes to shadow banning and plus, they fucking talked about Tate's for like a half an hour on the previous video. What the fuck do you think these videos are going to do for the next week? I don't care. We need to talk about the truth. According to Heat Map News, a managing director at climate change venture capital firm Prelude Ventures, Gabriel Craw, said Silicon Valley Bank was an integral part to the early stage climate tech community. And I hope that they survive in some form to continue that role. Well, survey says fucking no. An outlet reports that SVB bragged on its website about its support for hi of hydrogen solar and energy storage companies well there's nothing technically wrong with hydrogen i remember you guys might remember this too i think it was a cadillac commercial i seem to remember there was at least one of them in the early 2000s where they were finally going to start acknowledging hydrogen fuel in vehicles and then well even though it's a technology that was invented by a fucking farmer in his garage back in the 80s you can go and check those old documentaries until oh he was so proud about his invention until a member of the department of defense rocked up to his farm and then oh mysteriously died a couple months later nothing funny about that at all whatsoever but hydrogen power it's very effective it's it's quite safe after all and you get incredible use out of it and what's the pollution fucking zero just like nuclear don't want to talk about it though and solar it's just so impractical because to use my example because it's all about me at the end of the day joking of course solar energy it's it's just not practical bro unless you have so much fucking space like yeah if you want to put solar panels in the middle of the desert god bless great idea but up here in like you know where there's not a lot of people in like northern alberta and, and half of the northern provinces or provinces and then especially the territories as well where there's well, like how many hundreds of acres per individual like you have weeks especially in the more northern region or regions of uh None of it. That's a territory, by the way. Yukon, Northwest Territories. You got long stretches of time where you get an hour, two, three, four hours a day of sun if it's not overcast. Even here in Grand Prairie, like for a long portion of the winter, sun comes up nine o'clock in the morning and it's down by four as long as it's not snowing because then yeah okay solar panels they're big flat panels by the way so you're gonna have people out there cleaning off the panels to make sure that oh okay cool oh shit and it's an overcast day well oh fuck so we're screwed for getting energy that day whenever these greenies think about solar panel energy they just think oh you can just go ahead and replace the tiles that are on your roof and then you can just power everything it's great well, where the fuck do you store the excess energy and not everybody lives within a stone's throw of the equator shit doesn't fucking work like that same with wind same with every other you know hippie fucking program that's been tried and failed multiple times over the past few decades there are solutions that are out there that are both clean and effective but you don't like those you don't like nuclear you don't like natural gas because i seen a fracking video and it's just poison didn't you see that one video of the person who turned on their tap and lit their tap water like oh my god you're out of your fucking skull the largest residential solar company in america sunrun received a revolving line of credit from svb before its fall also oh my god what is that one place that was one of those things that late stage barack obama administration really was pushing all of that green energy and all of those cylindra cylindra completely went tits up after the government checks started rocking up because this shit isn't sustainable the technology if it could catch up with the ideas would be fantastic but it doesn't solar does a wonderful job at running your old calculators it does a terrible job at doing anything fucking else imagine everybody trying to charge their stupid tesla that everybody's supposed to have by 2035 we've got an initiative bro because if not the world is gonna end by like uh, three months from now tomorrow and shit but how effective is the sun at charging everybody's vehicle in fucking brandon manitoba in february 
fucking not very. But then if we want to play conspiracy theorist a little bit more, this is just a way for the government to try to micromanage your travel and then just put you onto the government's dole so that you just need to have your digital passport in order for you to travel 15 minute cities and all that jazz to just keep you as little worker drones to just go in and out. But it won't happen if you won't let them. Cross said, they are careful, thoughtful, and willing lenders to early stage companies. It sounds fantastic. That's normally what investors would be used for. But no, no, no. All of these uh, obviously awful products got to go to government insured banks in order to get some capital. Oh, you've got a climate change a safe policy that we need funding for. Oh, that's great. We're, we're a very inclusive bank. How much money do you need? As a bank, they were focused on the segment of the ecosystem that understood the risks that they were taking. <laughs> oh yeah, more than a bank that wasn't focused. Well, we've also taken a look at the administration at SVB, and um, they weren't focused on anything except for where their junk gets put into other people's junk. Not exactly a winning strategy, but to each their own. Clay Dumbass. Oh, I'm sorry, Dumas. Big Lita fan, if you know, you know, and if you don't, don't worry about it. A founding partner in the Climate Activist Venture Fund with money in SVB, lower carbon capital, <laughs> fucking atrocious, said the downfall of SVB will launch a thousand tweet threads, of course, because the people that were getting all of the funding this way didn't actually work. They just got a bunch of fucking green grants for Christ's sakes, like dorks that just get big fucking bank loans in order to rent a Lamborghini and pose for the gram. You guys are fucking worthless leeches on the system. But yes, the downfall of SVB will launch a thousand tweet threads. But right now our focus is securing payrolls for the lower carbon portfolio companies whose cash is tied up so they can keep their, their planet healing work planet healing work just again fucking provide the receipts stupid because yeah i'm 33 and i seem to remember a time where oh the earth cap the kilimanjaro are supposed to melt by 2008 we're all gonna be underwater oh wait it's 2008 and everything's fine uh actually i meant th I, mean, I meant 2015 oh shit still there huh fucking biggest propaganda push ever and now, now it's failing in real time. You'll love to see it. But let's just go ahead and run this out here for a second. Before its fall, the bank sponsored events for climate VCs and startup venture capitals, uh, including a one at Lake Tahoe Ritz-Carlton as recently as last week, according to the outlet. Great. So they're doing real work, like hosting networking events. Fucking Christ. I thought these were the idea of people that uh, they just needed a break. They just needed a leg up. So what are you doing? Having a fancy meeting in a ballroom at a Ritz-Carlton. Good stuff. Losing access to their cash balance for potentially several months can have catastrophic effects. Like these catastrophic effects, the ones that are just going to end, uh, lead to the end of humanity in five years' time? That's fantastic. A small portion of companies in this space are probably looking at that possibility and figuring out how to avoid it. You know how you avoid it? You work on projects that actually work and that are a boon to society instead of ones that are drains, ones that exist exclusively to fear monger and to help push failing awful policies. But that's just my opinion on things. But tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to be looking at a different bank with similar problems and that shit's going to be funny as a motherfucker. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.